Welcome to part two of my bristlenose pleco breeding project. For those of you who watch part one, you'll remember I kind of left off on a note of suspense. I had the two plecos mating in this one cave right here, and that was on October 9th. Now, unfortunately, they did not produce eggs on this particular occasion. I did check that night and the next day, and I, I did not see any eggs on this mating occasion, so maybe, maybe you could just chalk it up to an experience of young plecos, but... They did not successfully breed on this one, so I am going to leave it here, and I'm just going to do a little time hop to the next event. We have a pretty big development in this project here. I actually have some eggs in this cave now. Three days later, we are on October 12th, and they have successfully managed to lay a, a set of eggs inside this cave. The male is now guarding them. However, I do have a little bit of a situation. So the person I bought these big big plecos from he also included a couple of snails and I reluctantly said yes I took them even though I didn't really have any interest in having snails I added them to the tank anyway and now as it turns out there just happens to be a snail that has found his way to the very back of the cave right pretty much on top of the eggs so as much as I'd love to let the male do his own thing here I'm gonna take that cave out and put it in a little breeding net with the eggs in it and I'm gonna remove the snail and the rest of the snails from the tank because I don't know, it's a little weird that the snail only chose to go to that back of that cave once the eggs were laid and he's practically on top of them right now. It kind of worries me, so I am just going to remove all those snails and put this cave in a breeding box. Okay, so I have that pesky little snail removed, I have the cave with the eggs in it, and I have my little breeding box set up to just place it towards the top of the tank. I'm going to try to position it so that I can get some water flowing from the filter box inside of the cave to kind of mimic what the pleco would do with his fins kind of fanning the eggs and keeping water flow. Okay, so it's been two days since the eggs were laid and something really weird has happened here. What I can only assume is the same exact male that was originally guarding these eggs, the father of these eggs has now climbed into the breeding net, actually gone out of the water to climb up into the breeding net and take back his cave, and he also kicked the eggs out of the cave and into the breeding net. This is really, really weird because there is a bunch of vacant caves inside of the tank, and he somehow sought out this one, and I don't know how well you can see that breeding net, but that breeding net is at water level, just a little bit above water level, so he would have had to slightly climb out of the water to get up and into the breeding net, and then really wiggle his way into the corner to get inside the cave and kick out the eggs. This is just bizarre, so I've moved him back into the main tank, and because there's no eggs inside the cave anymore, I put the cave back in the tank too, I just have the eggs now sitting in here, and now that I'm able to get a better look at them in the light, I'm not entirely certain that they're fertilized. Um, they look slightly orange, but they also have a kind of white color to them as well. A couple of them have gone clear, so I'm not entirely positive if these are even fertilized, but I do have this net sitting in front of the filter box, so hopefully there is a good flow going over the eggs right now. So, unfortunately, my fears were realized these eggs did not come to be, and unfortunately, they did grow fungus and have gone pretty much completely white. Now, it could be one of two things here. It could be that they were just never fertilized from the start, but it could also be poor situations in my tank. I believe, I really believe I have this tank just too overcrowded right now, so I'm going to be very soon going to my local fish store and selling off some of the fish that I did get. I got very overzealous when I visited that one guy's house and bought so many plecos. I was just, I don't know, having this naive hope that it would form this massive breeding colony and that would be that, but it really hasn't. My tank can't handle this bio load and there's also been a lot of fighting between the males, so I am going to sell off a lot of this stock very soon. Just wanted to give a quick little update to show you one thing. I did try putting several different species of plants in this tank and the plecos just destroyed them. I believe this is an Anubis, but I'm not very good with my plant species. The only thing I've been able to successfully have with these guys is the Java ferns. You could probably get away with the Java moss too, but I think that stuff's just messy. I don't really like doing the Java moss, so if you want to do plants with these guys, go with the Java ferns. They don't really touch it. And I haven't had the chance yet to visit my local pet store and sell off some of those males and a couple of the females like I said I was going to, but this is the activity that I'm talking about. The males are just constantly going at it and fighting. 
I haven't seen injuries on anybody, but I really think this is distracting from breeding. Um, nobody's really in the mood to breed because it's just one big battle royale inside the tank right now, so definitely some lessons learned here, and I'm going to kind of, in part three, probably go over the lessons learned. Okay, so I did a big clean out of the tank. I don't have the wood in there right now because I am cleaning it, but I brought a lot of the fish in. I brought something like, I don't know, 10 or 12 plecos into my local fish store and just sold them for credit. Um, so what I have now in here is four males and, I don't know, five or six females, but I am going to cut those numbers down too. Probably pretty soon sell two of the females and sell three of the males. I want to be left with just one of the albino male. And I might pick up a super red and a blue eye or some other special breeds, but I am going to cut these numbers down a little bit more. But right away after selling off some of that stock, they've resumed guarding caves because they did kind of stop for a little while. So that's a promising sign, and I also have some news that I've been kind of keeping under wraps, but over the last month or so I've been working on a new tank, a 40 gallon breeder, because these guys are on a 40 gallon tall right now. I wanted them to have more space on the ground, and I'm also going to be doing plumbing it to a 30 gallon sump, so there's going to be a huge upgrade on the way in the next week or two. Okay, so here's the reveal I was talking about. I've been working on this 40 gallon breather tank. I put an overflow box in, which is plumbed to a 30 gallon sump tank underneath. I bought the tank and the stand and the sump tank all at Petco for a pretty reasonable price. Um, and I also added some additions to this tank. I have a super red male, a blue eye male, and two smaller super red males. So they'll also be joining the breeding group. I still have the four albino males in here. But I'm going to be making a trip to the pet store tomorrow and trading in three of the males and two of my albino females because I have like five or six of those. So I'm going to be cutting down the numbers again. So I'm going to be left with three adult males. It's going to be a super red, a blue eye, and albino. And then the two younger uh, super red males probably aren't sexually mature yet. So they're just growing out right now. So the long-term plan is not to keep them all in this 40-gallon breeder. Um, this is kind of just a temporary grow-out situation, and we'll see if any mating occurs during this time, but I'm not really looking to like interbreed these guys or anything. Um, I am going to be doing some 20-gallon breeder tanks, so when I get my hands on one or two super red females, that super red male will go in a 20-gallon breeder with those two females, and same thing with the blue eye. If I can get my hands on two blue eye females, then they will get their own dedicated breeder tank as well. So I just got rid of those albino males and females. I cut down the stock and I have a huge development today. We have our second set of eggs inside this new cave I got from the same guy I bought these super red plecos from. So I didn't even realize that there was eggs in this cave. I was actually moving some stuff around and I wasn't being too careful with the caves because none of the males have really been showing too much cave guarding. They've really been out and about. And my, my one albino male that's left in the tank, I guess he was actually guarding this cave. And he emerged from it when I, I slightly moved it. And it's probably been about an hour or two since I moved it. And he hasn't returned to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these guys in an incubator, in an egg incubator I actually bought. And I'm going to have the water just gently flowing over the eggs to try to prevent fungus. But I'm hoping this set is fertilized. Um, my water conditions with this much lower stock and this big sump I have now is a lot better than they were before, so I'm hoping we can fight off fungus and have some actual hatching eggs this time around. But this is really awesome, so I will update you guys over the next couple days. Okay, it is Monday, the very next day, and I don't have a whole lot of experience with this, as some of you that are watching this might be your first time as well, but... I'm almost positive these eggs are fertilized because there, there's development. There's clear development from yesterday. They're showing um, some features inside the eggs. Uh, yesterday they were just kind of orange balls, but now you can kind of see little lines in them and little dots. So in my opinion, these definitely look like they're fertilized. One little extra precaution I've been taking just because I'm like kind of a little nervous that maybe my LED um, aquarium light had something to do with the fungus before. Um, I don't know, it's just nervousness on my part. I've also been shutting the light off um, while these eggs are in the incubator just because I don't want to give any fungus a chance to take a foothold. So, I don't know, something in my head associated the light with the fungus. So I'm just keeping the light off until these eggs eventually, hopefully, hatch. 
Um, but yeah, definitely showing some development and I'm 99% sure these are fertilized. So it's actually happening right now before my eyes. I came up here, I turned the light on because I wanted to just examine them and begin filming them for an update. And I don't know if me turning the light on was one of uh, a type of trigger for the eggs or something, but they, they started popping like popcorn. The little wigglers are actually coming out of the eggs right now and I'm actually able to film the entire process and this is really, really cool. I'm probably gonna shorten this down and maybe give you guys some like highlights of these wigglers because this process is probably going to be somewhat lengthy and I'll probably upload a longer video just dedicated to the hatching of these eggs, but this is awesome. These eggs were fertilized and they're all hatching right now. Now, if I had to give it my best guess, these are pretty much all going to be albino. I know the father is albino. I'm not sure on the mother, but there's only four or five females in this tank and all but one of them are albino and the other one is a chocolate and that one's kind of on the smaller side, so I don't know if that one's even sexually mature yet. So best case is that these are probably all albino because the mother is probably albino as well. Unless, I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about the genes and the recessive versus the dominant, but maybe there'll be some chocolates in there too. All I know is that both parents were most likely albino. So this seems like the right place to leave off on for part two. We have successfully bred the pleco and part three will most likely just involve growing them out and maybe showing some of the different stages of growth. Um, I am very thankful to all of you who have followed this, this project with me and who have commented and given advice or asked questions. Uh, this has been a lot of fun so far and I look to enjoy the rest of the journey as well as far as growing them out. I'm going to put them inside of one of those little net breeders. Um, once they all hatch, I'm going to take them out of the incubator, put them inside a little net breeder inside of this tank until they absorb their egg sacs and get a tiny bit of size on them and then I'm going to move them to a separate tank. So if I had to guess, um, it's really tough to count them right now with the naked eye but it looks like maybe 40 to 50 of them in here. I have them in this little floating breeding box and I have the floating breeding box also secured to the side of the tank with a magnetic cleaner just in case one of the larger plecos in the tank should try to tip it they wouldn't be able to. And yeah, this is where I'm going to leave off. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and look forward to part three.